five slow growing areas in biotech research, which probably you should never enter. Now, I'm not saying that you should not never enter at all. If you are passionate about these subjects, you should. But definitely, these five fields are either saturated or slow moving or there are hurdles. And if you get into this research, your career will get stuck. Okay. So the number one in this would be traditional genetic modification of crops. So if you are um, into genetics and you like that field, definitely you should get in. But if you are getting into the traditional genetic modification of crops, there are a lot of regulatory hurdles which we see. And apart from that, there is a lot of public opposition farmer opposition and then ethical concerns and this leads to a slow pace of research and less funding and that's why this field I would never suggest you to get into. Now in all my videos I always talk about you know hot top and all those kind of fields but today I chose to talk about this because many students enter the wrong field and then later on they regret. So I don't want you to regret so the first one I told you. The second one according to me will be marine biotechnology. Now, not because marine biotechnology is moving slow. It is vast. It requires a lot of funding. The funding is not as much as uh, it is receiving. So, marine biotechnology is another slow moving area where uh, the requirement is huge actually, but the funding is not that great and uh, it's very less number of people also get into this. So, marine uh, biotechnology or marine biology is a place where uh, I would not suggest it is slow moving. The third would be the conventional antibiotic development. Now, I'll give you an example. So, it takes up to 20-25 years for one antibiotic to come into the market in the traditional manner. So, if you are into that kind of uh, traditional antibiotic research, then you should consider again switching on to bioinformatics because that is much faster. There is a limit on the innovation. The funding is drying up. More people are moving towards bioinformatics. So, yes. This is one field which is slow moving. Now followed by that, we also have standard biomaterials production. Like you have gelatin or collagen, these kind of products, uh, production and manufacturing. So already this market is saturated and uh, established players are there and the innovation is slow and uh, new entrants are not there. So this field is facing slowdown. So you should not get into that. Then, of course, you do have um, traditional fermentation process. So now the, there are, of course, new versions coming up. But the tra traditional fermentation for products like ethanol or simple organic acids, now this this is already done and saturated. So if you are into this kind of research, I would suggest get out because there's less of uh, innovation happening and the process is more of commoditized and it offers low ROI also, low profitability. So I don't think you should uh, get into the traditional fermentation process. Margins are low. Competition is high and you won't grow. So now apart from this, there are multiple other fields also where you can choose. So you should always choose those kind of biological research areas which has lesser regulatory impact. Okay, The market is not saturated. The innovation potential is huge. And uh, the funding opportunities are also available easily so that government or non-governmental funding is there. And it should be long-term viable. So these are the four or five things you should keep in mind. Now, considering that if you ask me, you have bioinformatics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, molecular biology, most of genetics, CRISPR. So that these are the fields which is growing in which uh, you can make uh, a career. Then you have anti-aging research, brain-machine interface. Um, and there are various other fields which I have covered in my other videos, which you can always check out. So these are the fields which you should get in and has got high growth potential, future viability. Uh, lesser regulatory hurdles or rather I would say even if the hurdles are there funding is high so you don't have to bother about the regulatory hurdles so you can always uh, you know um, pass, uh, circumvent that so these are the things which you have to keep in mind and uh, the only reason I made this video is let's not talk about only one side of biotech which is the bright side we'll talk about the downside also sometimes so that you know when you are crossing the road you should look at both the sides then only you don't crash into a uh, you know, wrong place so yeah these are the five places five research areas you should not uh, crash into but yeah let me know in the comment section what um, research areas you want to pursue so that i can personally let you know if there is scope or future in that so for now thank you so much for watching this video see you soon in the next one till then keep shining take care bye, -bye.